Hey guys, back with another Equine Thoughts podcast here, episode number 73, and yeah, this is, I mean, this might be a two-parter, this might be a three-parter, I don't even know, this is the biggest patch, I mean, that we all ever could have expected. They, I mean, last time I podcast, we just found out V4 came out, right, and I was like, that's a good sign that it came out a week before because usually that means that there's going to be more things coming and boy did they they unpack it i mean we found out that uh, we were going to get rebalanced we talked about expecting that when they uh, bugged it in the may update so we were expecting that but not in june we thought it was going to be a july update that came and then the max damage cap increase dropped the day before patch. And that just blew my mind. That's that's three patches in one, right? That's a whole year's worth of updates, essentially. Right? They could have done all three of those things the entire year, spread them apart, and I mean we would have been insanely happy. But they threw all of it at once. This is the mega update. This is everything on top of the fact that they added the new symbols so that people can do lucid faster. Um, they, uh, you know, they had the pet changes, so many changes, right? We're going to dive into it in, I don't even know how long, but I wanted to give it, I want to go into detail. So this might be a long one, part one, part two. And then I wanted to go into testing Paladin, testing lines, and just seeing the damage output because yeah, there's a lot to unpack. There's a lot, a lot to unpack. And I think I just fun, just want to do it. But before we even get into our patch notes, I think it's important for us to look at what KMSM did, right? I don't want it to brush it aside because this is what our future patches are going to look like. This is kind of our roadmap for the next year, next six months. And so they got, they had their, their little shine event, which was mainly around, surrounded by the fact that they're going to have a ton of new exclusive MapleStory mobile events, MapleStory mobile boss and they're going to get a new exclusive baseball story mobile warrior class that's hype that's the sea of 2.0 um but yeah so they said that july anniversary they're gonna have the new warrior august they're gonna have a new boss and then october they're gonna have the maple story Amp original boss and then winter 2024 is gonna be black mage so they are getting a ton of stuff this is included with a uh, varus hilla they're gonna get the new pendant drop they're going to get the new gear arcane gear which is going to for us probably be you know built up our absolute lab so that is a ton of stuff they're getting this year so that is 2025 expectations 2026 that's going to be awesome for them of course on top of that they get their burning events they're getting missiles raised all these different things um, but that is sort of the the roadmap for them a roadmap for us and what to look forward to so um yeah that's pretty insane and i think my biggest takeaway from that is that re-rolling the one of the things that i've taken away from this is that re-rolling is getting a bit easier right and so with the ability to get symbols arcane power because i was holding a lot of newer players re-rolling players back was that it took them six a year to get to level 235 just to unlock that symbol to get through lucid and eventually get to will but now they can get there at 225 and that is a game changer for a lot of players and i'm excited for that and that is and i think just throwing out the idea i was talking to a lot of people a few people about this that it'd be a good time for this new new um warrior exclusive maple story mobile warrior class to have a burning event to 200, right? And possibly even further. Now that's asking for a lot, but I think when it came to Sia, they showcased it. They um, obviously made it very strong in OP, but not too many people re-rolled, right? And I think one of the lessons that they can learn is that it's going to take a lot to force people to re-roll. And they obviously made a lot of changes in order to incentivize it, to make it easier, but I think just adding that those time gated things that you cannot pay your way through, right? That takes time leveling, 
maybe commander drops, um, getting those symbols, other ways to get symbols, but instead of just doing dailies, it would make it at least more appealing. I mean, even for me, right, as a paladin player, like what or as a demon slayer as a second main, why wouldn't I want to transfer my gear over to war if it's gonna be that strong, if the process is gonna be that much easier, um, smoother, and it's not gonna take a lot of time. Why not? Seeing how great Sia is and seeing how much I like warriors and how um, you know they've been pushing towards making these exclusive class being very strong support and DPS. It's definitely an option. If I'm thinking about it, I know definitely a lot of people will be as well. And maybe as a sort of using my, you know, hoping for the, the best, maybe some sort of just one-to-one -one swap over. Think about it. Right? Even if it costs money, packages, or whatever it is to do that, and it would allow you to not just cut over gear, but it would allow you to maybe have the weapons transfer over where it's like a, a scroll that it could change from, you know how necros have the change of the options. You can change it from a one-handed hammer to a the new, the new warrior weapon or like any weapon. That'd be pretty sweet, right? And I think it would, because that's the hardest part to transfer over. Right, armors you can do even if you were allowed to go from mage to warrior and it would cost a scroll or cost something some sort of package people would do it right and just food for thought ways to make it more appealing more possible for whales and free-to-play players to re-roll and not have to be start from be a year behind as far as progression but that is just me talking about the KMSM updates and it's exciting as well. And I just didn't want to forget about it because of all the stuff, insane stuff that we got. But I'll be right back. We're going to dive into these patch notes and yeah, three parts to the patch notes. It, it's going to be a lot. Stay tuned and I'm excited to go through this with everybody. All right. So let's get into this part one. Fourth, B-School Woodland Camping Event Quality of Life Improvements Pet Improvements. A lot, a lot. I love this. I mean, this is a cool little animation too with the seal. See, looks sick. But yeah, so we're just going to get into this. I'm not going to get too much. It's crazy because V4 is such a big update that we've been waiting for. And it feels like as far as the patch notes, there's not much to it, right? All these descriptions we kind of already had from KMSM. So we already knew that. The biggest thing that we can take away um is from other stuff and what actually happens in our gameplay, right? Because we have to do the testing. The lines from KMSM do not match up. Like for Paladins, for example, it was not the same. So we definitely have to do testing. It doesn't give you line counts here, obviously, and skill percentage. So, um, but I think one of the things that I stood out was Paladins one is very good. Paladins has one of the better ones, especially in our game because it's stacked with Divine Echo. So we got extra lines there. Night Lord's one, very good as well. It's a nice little burst in a, in a kind of a in a 40 second window, I think. But Night Lords are back looking nice. Um, Shadowers, I think Shadowers are very good as well. Dual Blades, passive, like we talked about. Bishops in that one shot group. Ice Lightning Mage, better than expected. The line counts are better than expected. So. Ice Lightning Mages might be pretty, pretty good. Better than um, I thought of last week when I showed those lines. Fire Poison Mages always are good. Bowmasters. I, I think just going through all of this, um, I mainly went through it in my last podcast, right? And if you haven't watched, I mean, you guys can already see it. So all these skills are very good. And the difference between level 1 and level 30 is quite massive. So... If there's any tips that I can give you guys, it's that we'll talk about it and they'll, they'll showcase it later. It mainly comes in the rebalance section where they're really emphasizing V skills. And that is going to be majority of everyone's damage. And I think rightfully so, that makes sense. So, right, like level 60, third job and fourth job skills should not be the prime DPS, right, compared to fifth job. So they made a great emphasis on that. And these combat skills are insane. Not gonna lie, I think it's like thirty-five percent final damage and 
15 or something percent crit damage uh, for 40 seconds over two minutes. So the burst is going to be insane with these. You definitely want to max that out. But this is what I wanted to focus on because one of the things that I give props to, they obviously put a lot of thought into this, is that they actually put reasoning behind all of this, right? So they actually talked about job balancing adjustments here, consecutive skill button inputs, underrated quality of life change. Instead of spamming the crap out of your buttons and getting carpal tunnel, you can just hold it. So hold down skill, even with presets. It's actually pretty smooth. Um, I think one thing I noticed was that there is a sort of, just like any hold down skill, like I think after like 20 something seconds, 30 seconds, it's going to stop attacking. So you just got to be aware of that. You kind of have to take your finger off and reset the channel per se. I, mean, I recognize that with wind archers and stuff. So it's definitely the same for this function, but you can obviously enable or disable it. So that is, that's nice. It's nice. And I found it very got to get used to it got to get used to it for sure but it feels nice and smooth and so this is what i wanted to talk about here and they this is usually fine print that people overlook but it's very important to understand what their thought process is when it comes to why they made these changes and it's been consistent across most of the classes where for the job balancing right they're talking about these things all job balancing adjustments, right? That makes sense. Skill frequency adjustments, cooldowns applied instantly. These are, we, we'd expect of this. Uh, KMSM has this, but this is uh, just awesome, right? Instead of three minute cooldowns, two minute cooldowns. Right? Instead of 90 second duration, it's down to 60 or 45, depending on what it is. And that just allows for more flexibility, right? Um, I think more consistency, because like you're not tied down to it's just very hard to get 90 seconds of the straight dps in endgame bossing right so if it allows you to so if you get screwed by like a lotus purple orb or if you get screwed by damien's rng or if you die and you're sitting res timers and your burst is up you there goes all your damage right so this allows for like more room for error for players that maybe can't maximize it it just makes it easier for them to have more uptime. And I think it's great. So the goal, obviously, right here, the goal is to greatly increase the value of e-skills, right? Incentivizing character growth, increasing their overall DPS. This way, all jobs would do approximately the same amount of DPS. And we'll get to that because it's shocking how consistent and balanced the lines are um, over three minutes. And obviously, they're accomplishing by adjusting the damage buffs based on the current DBS. So they put a lot of thought and work into this. And I'm going to say so far, one day after getting a lot of information from a lot of different players, the line counts are as balanced as ever. So shout out to them. And again, skill frequency, you guys can read up on this, but to adjust, they obviously adjusted things to add more lines. If duration is um, reduced so basically they're allowing you to do more damage in less time right so instead so if a skill is even like 10 seconds of duration um it's the, th the theme was they'll reduce it to like six seconds seven seconds but then add more lines so you're doing more lines in less time so there's less likely chance of like the boss moving and you getting griefed right because again 10 seconds of a boss staying in the same position is you know it's just or 15 seconds is just rare Right, so that's always nice. Um, clone damage, and so this is how they balance the game as well, where clone damage has its own sort of hard cap. And they made changes again based off of that, but this is just their thought process. I love that they did this and explained it. So they tried to give an example here, and the best way that I can explain it is this, right? So before, if your base damage was, say you were capping, Say like your bait, your damage was right seventy thousand. Ah, yes. So that's uh, so now it's not based off of your damage that you're doing. So if you're doing a hundred, if you if you had unlimited cap, right, and you were doing a hundred um, mil per line, but your cap was fifty, you'd only show fifty. 
right? But previously, if it was a clone, you would, and it was a 50% clone, you would be showing, you would still be capping those clone lines, right? Because it'd be taking 100 mil of your damage. You'd be taking that overall damage and halving it, doing 50% of that. So the clones would actually be 50%. So it'd actually be full cap. Every line, every clone line would cap. But after this update, if you're hitting 100 mil lines, it does not matter. The clone lines are based off of your cap. So instead of doing, if your cap is 50 mil, right, and the clones are 50%, now instead of doing 50 mil and the clones doing 50 mil, you're actually only going to do 50%, you're only going to do 50 mil and 25 mil, right? So it seems like a huge nerf at the end end game. But I think that for majority of people, like for Paladins, for example, they all think they cap those clone lines. They don't. Absolutely, you do not. Um, I do not, right? So if I don't, you're not. So this is actually going to be a boost of damage for you guys. It's going to be easier for you guys to cap those because they changed it. They added those clone lines to instead of being 50 or 30, they made it like 90%, right? So they're basically cap lines. So they basically gave you free damage. But they also added more lines or the reduced lines. And they, they kind of balanced it depending on the class. So we'll go into it a little bit more into detail, which is why I wanted to make this into like part one and part two, because it's very important that you understand that all these things are in place. There's a lot more to damage than just lines, right? And if you, lines are actually pretty balanced, but there's more into it and how you do damage is super important. So one of the things that they did as well, number four, underrated, but absolutely massive massive 15 percent ignoring me defense some skills were at six percent and now they're going to 15 percent. so that's nine percent more cap free cap to these big hard hitting skills so like a grand my v3 skill which was bursting my biggest burst was at six percent now it's gonna do 15 percent. that is huge right that is huge absolutely huge buff to our burst, which puts the emphasis on why V skills are so important now, why you have to maximize them. You have to get the most value out of your V skills because that is where a majority of your damage is coming from. They are emphasizing this right here. They're telling us this. That's what they want to do by making these changes, right? So however your gameplay was before, just it, it may change slightly. It may not, but just understand that you want to be a little bit more strategic and careful with how you use your V skills. So like here, right? 9 to 15, 6 to 15. Hit counts went up, right? Hit counts went up. So everyone's getting more hit counts a lot of the times, and they're getting more enemy defense. So these lines are hitting extremely hard. And this is their burst. This is their V3, I think. So this is hitting a ton, and it went from 3% to 15%. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that is a huge gain for them. And what they did was, and they did this consistently for most classes as well, they reduced hit counts of the V4 skills to balance it out, right? So again, this is what they've been doing. Because this is, think of it this, right? Gunger used to be their main skill, right? It still does a lot of their damage, right? But it's a fourth job skill, right? It doesn't make sense that the fourth job skill should be doing most of your damage. It shouldn't be your top priority over your fifth job skills, right? So that is what they're trying to tell us. They're trying to tell us that use these skills, maximize these skills, these V4 and V3 skills and V2 and V1. And these V4 skills, they're kind of are, are fillers. They're secondary, right? So I'm gonna get right back. My camera is about to lose memory and we'll get into we're just getting started with this. I'm sorry, it's gonna be a long one, but it, it, it's worth it, trust me. All right, so yeah, we're back and you can see that they, again, emphasize, these are big bump ups in lines, right? Double the lines, see, so this is going from almost double lines and it's going times six. 
so that is massive, right? And so this is for war, for heroes, they're deciding this is the iframe, right? So they're deciding if they have to use it for rotation or actually for survivability. And then they actually got Raging Blow buffs, right? Because their V skills got reduced, hit counts. Yeah, so they obviously did the math on this and decided, you know, let's give them extra lines here for Raging Blow. So that's nice for them. They got a lot of lines overall. So we've increased, but they, again, their emphasis was increasing this World Reaver. I think this is their V2 skill to be kind of their big burst of the rotation, right? And then Paladin. So this is super important. Paladins, if you don't know, Bond. The Divine Echo Bond is sort of the underrated DPS skill in the game, right? It changes your solo content versus team content because you're bonded to a player. So... They talked about this for Paladin players. Clone damage, right? They changed it. If and They said, if we were to bump up Bond final damage, we would have had to adjust a few other Paladin skills to compensate for the excessively high DPS. Facts. Instead, we chose to reduce Bond's final damage ratio and make smaller adjustments to Paladin's other skills. So, again, they they worked this out and they did this and makes sense. So, they changed what I was talking about before. They changed this 55%. So if they kept 55% the same, we would have doing much less damage. But they added this to 90%. So basically clones are going to be capping or just 10% less cap, which is for most people, I'm telling you, most most Paladin players, like the middle game, were not capping these echo lines. They weren't close. So this is actually a boost for you guys. This is actually a boost. You're probably not going to have to buff as much for guild honor battle and guild content and for content in general. And these lines are just going to hit harder for free. Right? That, that's that's huge. Right? And it's nicer. They reduced this cooldown. So shorter window of burst. But in a three-minute time frame, we're actually going to get more lines. So two minutes, we actually, two-minute time frame, half uptime burst, half uptime no damage. But then in a two minutes, in a three-minute time frame, it's going to be two-thirds uptime um, of burst versus before it was only half so kind of an interesting interesting setup because before it was two minutes we had uh 90 seconds of the 120 seconds of huge burst but i think this is better like trust me on that this is this is better i think people were complaining about this it's just you got to change your mindset a little bit right um and so again they buffed these lines kind of standard what they're doing more ignoring the defense grand guardian huge so this went from if you don't know this went from this is our big damage skill and the biggest difference why paladins are going to be very good i think is because before grand guardian we had to wait so it was a two minute cooldown but we had to wait to three minutes to pair it with divine echo because divine echo right here doubled the lines so it if you used it with divine echo it was 1600 lines if you used it by itself it was only 800 so now now the divine echo is on a two minute cooldown it matches with grand guardian so basically, these are paired together. So in a two, in a three minute fight, previously you only did sixteen hundred lines from Grand Guardian, which was the Paladin big burst one shot skill, right? And that was in the first six seconds, whatever, first ten seconds of the fight, right? When you see Paladin's DPS spike because of this skill, sixteen hundred lines over three minutes. So it was okay. It was pretty good. Seemed very OP still. But now after this rebalance, in three minutes we're gonna get two uses of this. And the lines are going to go from 1,600 to 2,400 times two. So previously, in three minutes, we were only doing 1,600 lines, which was still insane, right? But now, we're going to get 2,400 times two, 4,800 lines in a three-minute time frame. Yeah, and skill damage went up, so easier to cap it. Ignoring my defense, 15%. So it went up, hit much harder. So our... Paladins, we'll talk about this later, but Paladins, you can't complain about this. This is, these blast lines and divine judgments, it had to be done. But the emphasis on V skills, V3 and our V4 is priority now. Everyone should be thinking about that, how to maximize our V skills. And it just makes sense, right? So if you don't have your V skills maxed, that should be number one priority. It shouldn't be cap. It shouldn't be physical attack. It should be maxing your nodes. Get them to level 30 because this is where they're telling us the damage is coming from. 
this is the most important skills that they are trying to rebalance to empathize your lines. Your line counts are not going to be the same if your V skills are not maxed. So there's one takeaway, max your V skills. But yeah, so we're going to lose blast lines, divine judgment lines. It's fine. It's a trade-off. You have to maximize Grand Guardian. You have to, or you're just not going to get the DPS that you expect. That's my tips for Paladin players. Night Lords, insane. They're back, baby. They are crushing. So again, I'm not going to, it's going to take me forever to get through all this, right? I'm sorry that I, but you want to look at, if you didn't read this for your class, read it. This is what their thought process is, right? So Barrage, going to be insane. And 70% is huge. That's a big boost. That's a big boost. Buff duration is nice. This is actually really good, especially for like Covert. For three minutes, you get an extra 30 seconds. Tough. Tough. And then Shuriken. This is what I'm talking about. More damage in less time. So eight hit counts in eight in eight seconds. It probably hit X amount of times. 21. Huge. In five seconds. So more lines in less time. That is the best that is the best and obviously ignoring mid defense dark lord omen insane love this skill for mobbing my mobbing they're very good as well and then shadow partner right this is the clones they're talking about 35 to 70 so look through your guys classes right um they talk about this and then how it applies here again consistent hit counts go up for v skills Hit count goes up for V skills. Hit count goes up for V. Oh, this one actually went down, but max repeat count. Yeah. So increase for shadowers as well, but they're capped. Their clone lines are capped. Dual blades. This is, I don't know if this is true. I didn't actually confirm with the dual blade, but this is a huge actual, huge. 30 seconds to two minutes. We'll see. But that's a lot. They increased the school, the cooldown, gave you more lines though. Huge. I think dual blades just have so many skills. And like Wowzers. They didn't change the cooldown here. So it's actually gonna be very fast and fluid. That's gonna crank. Yeah, so I mean dual blades, dual blades are nice. Bishops. So this is I have to talk about this because bishops. This is where they actually made a sneaky but super crucial rebalance. And this has to do with resurrection for bishops, which also affects phantoms, which also affects phantoms, buccaneers, time leap, right? So resurrection was shown an intentionally high level of utility when there are multiple bishops in the party, including phantoms, who stole resurrection for swipe skill, right? So to fix this, we change the resurrection cooldowns to apply to all other bishops and phantoms. So, but they gave them more DPS, right? To bring more, um, I guess just to bring more, less utility, more use of a bishop, right? So that is huge, right? So basically what they're saying is you cannot, like if a bishop res, phantom cannot, res as well they all share the same the same cooldown and time leap does not reset it it's all going to get affected like so it changes things right there's less room for error there's less support from phantoms there's less support from bishops which is what they're trying to emphasize the whole thing they did this across the board for sias for shades they reduced this amount of support that they provide and Gave them more DPS and just makes it more mechanics are super important to balance out the amount of DPS that we are going to get. And so it's going to be stressful at first. It's going to really, um, you know, they just can't leech Sia's. You just can't leech bishops anymore in content or leech shades as easily. Right. So just keep that in mind that mechanics still matter even more now. If you die, consistently you better start uh getting it together because you're going to be tested and you are going to be put on the spot when you keep dying and there's no bishops to save you or phantoms to save you so but they did make benediction more frequent every two minutes 
Angel of Balance, huge buff. Angel of Balance is very good for bishops. Peacemaker, huge buff. Hit range increased by 28%. So basically, you just throw it out there. It's going to hit the entire, basically the entire map. I don't even know. Uh, Tramp Feathers, very good as well. That's a lot of their DPS. Fountain of Vengeance, good. So Bishops, I'm surprised they didn't buff um, AR, but Bishops count is, is pretty good. And they still got good support. Um, but it's going to change the game a little bit. And so Ice Lightning Mages... Again, they added some things. So you got to check out, right? Hit count increased. Ice Age is going to crank six times their targets less than three. That's a lot. So the nice thing about Ice Lightning Mages is they have burst skills within a short time frame. So actually, currently, Truffle Lock X is crushing. His Mulong score is, I think, the best in the game so far, as you know, early. But he is beating a lot of people, and they got buffs. And their V4 is actually better than expected as well, I think. And a new thing was that Lightning Orb. It's not it's not excluded, but it's going to be allowed uh, activated separately. So it's kind of like Shades, um, I think it's their V3, where it procs their hyper skill every so, so many seconds. That's what they're doing right here. Lightning Orb, which is, I think, their biggest DPS skill. Yeah, 30, yeah Lightning Orb is insane. 15 seconds so they just get it every 15 seconds every 30 seconds and basically every 15 seconds and they may actually get it twice at the start and at the 30 second mark so that's ice lane image v4 might not might be underwhelming but their rebalance they are seem to be very strong and it's very flexible with how they do damage so that's very nice i'm, I'm sorry i'm gonna breeze through this fire poison mages Just allows for more, less variance. It says, Bowmasters, finally, Bowmasters are happy. Inhumane skill got buffed. They got seven lines now. Quiver increased. All of these skills got increased, right? Storm of Arrows, very good as well. So the main emphasis right here is making it more rewarding to cast directly in situations where you need a quick burst of damage for inhumane speed, right? Which is nice right it, it feels like it's more of a again skill cap use it when you really need to use it to maximize damage and it's going to pay off dramatically increased hit counts 200 lines very nice five extra lines there so that's probably added there's probably a lot of attacks in there as well so yeah, they're getting a significant amount. Pathfinders are going to be insane. Their Raven Tempest is going to hit like a truck and more frequently on top of their V4. Their bursts are going to be in disgusting. They got more lines here. I think they got Nova Blast. Change so that invulnerability attack against all attacks. Last for five seconds after casting. Ooh, that's nice. So it's actually an iframe. If I understand that correctly, and it's not during the cast, it's actually afterwards. So if you just want to use this as like a, not even for skill, you can just use it for an iframe. You can actually use it. That is pretty nice. Hmm. <laughs> Pathfinders, yikes. They are going to be in very good. Corsairs, I heard, have a really high line count. It probably is just going to get higher with the rebalances so excited for that all you see oh actually this went down down but they obviously focused on increasing v skills so yeah you can see consistency across the board buccaneers got actually a quite a bit of a change lightning form serpent vortex new new a lot of new they just revamping we've added a feature to grant the maximum stack of serpent scales immediately upon applying this and eliminating the need to manage buff stacks separately before the boss fight that's good that's that's pretty cool i feel like that's like you kind of use it on as you please cannoneers can buffs three to 15 double the hit count cooldown removed i gotta see that i need to see i need to see 
Cannoneer gameplay, please. I think there's one in Geminis group. I gotta see it. These skills are sick. Rolling Rainbow. Sick. I love that skill. Dawn Warriors, just more buffs, more lines. I love how it just says hit count was just set too low. Just insane buff. What is that? 16 to 144. Okay. Glory of Guardian. So that's obviously their big burst cooldown. So they're going to get it more frequently as well. Yeah. Dawn Wars. Whew. And the Nightwalkers. So they actually removed a clone. Sneaky. In exchange for removing the first Shadow clone, we're giving Nightwalkers other core skills a significant buff. The choice was made to address the issue having too many clone damage. Fair resulting low DPS for a high number of hits, and to fix compatibility issues with other skills. Okay, we'll see how that plays out. Ed is... <laughs> uh, we haven't done any boss, and we'll probably do it today, but Ed is not excited, but I think that'll be just fine. I mean, I think that would be just fine, but yeah, these clone lines, 70% here. Shadow Spears is... A ton of lines, a ton of damage as well. Greater Servant is going to be insane, 70%. So I think he is upset because they are, he already caps because his stats are insane. So these are actually nerfs to him because they were hitting 100%. But I think for majority of Nightwalkers, they're going to get a good buff. They're going to get a good buff. Shadow Illusion, Third Clones. So yeah, these are small lines though, right? They Nightwalkers have a ton of lines over three minutes, but I think this kind of balances it out, right, to the, to the more to the median and to the norm. Dark Omen, huge. Bats, huge. Bats for days, Omen for days, clones for days, Nightwalkers damage for days, in my opinion. Okay, and then we'll keep going. Blaze Wizard and Orbital Flame. Sheesh. Yeah, they just got buffs. Like this 6 to 15%, you know it's a good skill and it's going to do a ton of damage now. Yikers, that is going to be insane. I like these. That's going to hit hard, isn't it? It now deals up to four times enemies, two on launch and two on return. And the line count is huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Win Archers. Just love to see it. <laughs> you get all these descriptions, these one-liners, all these things like this. Win Archer. Nothing. Win Archer, just straight buffs. Straight buffs across the board. Just lines. Ignoring the defense. Keep it simple. Keep it moving. Win Archers. Yeah. Sometimes simple is better. Don't think about it. Just do it. Lightning... Oh, why is it like Thunderbreakers? Where was Phenomenon? Where single lightning bolts dealt extra damage, but chain lightning bolts did not. They overall damage, not changing the skills, but we're significantly improving their cooldowns, hit counts to do more damage. Yep. Straightforward. Primal Bolt. It's going to be in pretty good. Interesting. Pretty good. Arc Charger is their clone line, right? So that's, again, all these classified clone lines are going to have a lot of lines and do insane damage Iran so this one was confusing to me right a long thing basically we had to wait and see till gameplay right I tried to read this thing I tried to talk to Axel Rad about that this he's like I just gotta test it out and when he tested it out they're back maybe they maybe not back they're just insane they're doing very well their V4 hit harder than people they expected as well. And I think one of the biggest things is their skill delay is better. So it's a lot smoother, I think. Reduce skill delay, reduce skill delay, reduce skill delay, reduce skill delay. I don't know. I honestly don't know what all these finishing skills are, but reducing skill delay adds up, right? It's sneaky good. Just more frequency, more with your attacks and more responsive and then they obviously got lines across the board 
where the V scale is similar to everyone else, where they are going to do great, great things. Phantoms, phantoms. I mean, I've talked about this before, where phantoms needed a button nerf to Sancro, and they've actually got it in KMSM, so they knew this was coming. Well, the veteran ones did, right? So again, it makes sense. They're just stealing skills from explorers. It should not be the same, right? Bishops, the same. Night Lords, Bleed Dart, not be the same. Sancro, reduced. Phantoms would be just fine. They got a trade-off. I mean, if I was a Phantom, if, I mean, if I was a Paladin, I would take a 15-second reduction in Sancro for more lines, which is exactly what the Phantoms got. Right, less survivability, they already have enough, and more lines. So yeah, Luck of the Draw, very good. Ace in the Hole, very good. Phantom Mark, very good. Rose, Tempest. So this is may not seem like a it may seem like a nerf, but it's actually a buff because the cooldown now applies immediately. So get a more uptime on it. Very good. Millie, skill and delay decrease by 30%. So reduce skill delay during casting by 70%. Just more fluid, right? I think one of the biggest issues with Phantoms is the knockback, and it kind of makes it clunky, but this is nice. Right, you can go because they have a lot of skills as well, so they can go between skills and get right back onto melee immediately. And one line is kind of like 20 lines for how fast they attack, so it is a lot. And they sacrificed bleed dart, sancro went from 30 to 15 seconds, and cooldown just across the board. Most likely, not stealing that skill anymore, they're going to steal probably paladin's skill, paladin's single res. Lumi, Morningstar, Equilibrium. We've adjusted the level of our skill for Equilibrium to status to better align with a new fourth V skill ability to deal burst of damage. However, we too luminous itself to have higher DPS than before. We've changed the way skills we use frequency can be cast. Okay, so again, pretty straightforward. Actually got less lines. Less lines, but more ignoring the defense. Equalize, cooldown increased. So that's when they can immediately get into equilibrium. Skill day re delay re reduced by 25%. Jeez, that is nice. 25%? Holy. So that's going to be their burst, right? Um, they reduced the lines. Apocalypse actually increased and they reduced it. 25% and 9% is actually a ton. Nice. Nice for them. Like they need it. But Morningstar, Reflection. Skill delay, skill delay reduced. Oh, these actually are caps. So it would be interesting to see how this plays out. And that's it for part one. We're going to stop here, try to upload this as soon as possible. I mean, there's that's not even in the part one of the patch notes, but I felt like I owed it to every class to at least dive into it a little bit, right? There's just so many changes. Um, and it's, it's nice for me to learn all these classes as well and see how everything, you know, the amount of skills that they have and how uh, the meta is going to change and where they like get their lines from, just to help you guys, um, help me and help you guys get as much information as possible for not just your own class, but other classes as well. So I'll be right back trying to upload this soon, and then part two maybe come out in either today or tomorrow, and then part three, well, just content for days. So I appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe to see all this content. I much appreciate it. And uh, we'll get back right back.